In this video, I want to compare and contrast random effects estimators with the fixed effects estimators, which we've already spoken about. So the model which we're going to be using here is slightly different to the one which we've used before. I'm just going to use a generic variable yit as a dependent variable. And then our model is just going to be beta naught, some constant, plus beta 1 times xit, plus beta 2 times some other independent variable zit. And I don't mean anything by calling one of these variables x and the other one z. I've just used sort of random letters of the alphabet to represent these independent variables. And then we have our unobserved heterogeneity, which is this alpha i term here as well as our idiosyncratic error uit. So as we've spoken about before, the assumption of random effects is that the covariance between alpha i and the independent variable xit has to be equal to zero. Not only that, we also have to have that the covariance of alpha i with the other independent variable is also equal to zero. And these two assumptions together ensure that beta 1 hat, when the hat here indicates, well, maybe I'll write a random effects there, along with the other assumptions which we need to assume, these two assumptions ensure that the random effects estimates of beta 1 and beta 2 are both consistent. Okay, so I want to talk about the relative pros and cons of random effects versus fixed effects. One of the pros is that if these two above assumptions are abided by, then it turns out that the standard error of beta hat random effects, or the estimated standard error rather, will be less than the estimated standard error of beta hat fixed effects. So it is actually a more efficient estimator, even though we know that under these two above assumptions being true, they are both consistent. Another definite benefit of random effects is that it allows us to estimate the effect of time constant variables on a dependent variable. Whereas we know for fixed effects that that isn't possible. Okay, so what are the cons of random effects estimation? Well, one of the obvious cons, and definitely the most obvious rather, is that it's almost certainly not going to be the case that the covariance of alpha i with the independent variables is equal to zero. That is quite a strange set of circumstances in order for that to be the case. Essentially what we would need to happen sort of practically is that we would have needed to control for as much variation in y as possible by including a whole host of independent variables such that the unobserved variable alpha i is very, very small. And that happens in quite a minority of cases, but it can still happen. And if it is actually the case that these two covariances aren't equal to zero, then the major con of random effects is that it is inconsistent. So whereas fixed effects is always consistent, independent of whether this covariance is equal to zero or not, random effects hinges on these assumptions being true. Another con of random effects is that we don't actually estimate the parameter alpha i, whereas we can in fixed effects or least squares dummy variables estimation, because remember that these two things are essentially one and the same. And this kind of goes back to the difference in mentality between random effects models and fixed effects models. In Fixed effects models, alpha i are just treated as some parameter which is fixed to be estimated essentially. So this can be estimated just by including dummies for each individual i in our sample. Whereas for random effects, the alpha i are, as the name suggests, treated as random variables. And because they're treated as random variables, they're not really seen as a parameter that we need to estimate. So that's a sort of difference in mentality between random effects and fixed effects. Whether we end up choosing random effects or fixed effects is gonna depend on the situation, obviously. 
And it turns out that there is a particular test which we can actually use to test between whether we should be using random effects or fixed effects models. And it is known as the Hausman test. And it's something which I'm going to cover in other videos. But just to say that there is a particular test which we can actually use to test is actually explicitly testing whether there is this correlation between alpha i and the independent variables.